Hello and welcome to today's Global Fleet Champions Spotlight session. Global Fleet Champions Spotlights are short, focused webinars to help anyone who employs people who drive for work to manage road risk within their organisation. Each spotlight provides in-depth insight into a particular topic relevant to your fleet safety programme. For more information, please visit globalfleetchampions.org. Today's spotlight session is focused on driver mental health and well-being and is kindly sponsored by Teletrack Navman. Long hours alone in their vehicle, stressful situations and little interaction with their colleagues in person, all of these are common challenges faced by professional drivers that can affect their mental health. Fleet managers need to be aware of the signs that their drivers are struggling with mental health issues so that they can help to manage the risks and get them the, the support they need. In this webinar, you will learn how poor mental health increases the risk of a road crash occurring, how to recognise the signs that your drivers may be struggling with mental health issues, and what effective policies look like to support employees' mental well-being. In a moment, a multiple choice question poll will appear on your screen so we can find out your views on this topic. It is anonymous, simply select one answer and press submit and we'll discuss the results at the beginning of the Q&A session, which will take place at the end of today's presentations. You can put forward your questions at any time during the webinar by using the chat box on the webinar panel. I'll hand over in a moment to Heather Waters from Teletrack Navman, who will be introducing today's session. We'll then hear from Rebecca Posner from CCAV, who will be delivering uh, our presentation today. The poll question will appear on your screen shortly and the spotlight session will then begin. Thank you. Welcome to all of our attendees today. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Heather Waters and I'm delighted to be representing Teletrack Navman as sponsors for today's webinar. So a huge thank you to Break and to Global Fleet Champions for allowing us the chance to do so. I'm proud to be able to spend the next five minutes or so just giving a brief overview as to why the topic of driver wellbeing is particularly close, not only to Teletrack Navman as a brand, but also to the hearts of the real people behind our business too. Some of our attendees today may already be familiar with the following, um, but at the start of September we launched a nationwide video campaign in partnership with Break, titled Who is a Commercial Driver? And this campaign saw eight UK businesses take part and a total of 15 commercial drivers all speaking to the camera about their personal experiences with working throughout the pandemic. So why did we launch this campaign? What was the purpose behind it? Without a doubt, the pandemic has heaped masses of extra pressure onto our drivers. And yet without their continuous efforts, communities across the entire nation would have struggled without access to essential goods, services, and even healthcare. They are the people who travel our streets every day. They deliver essentials and they are the ones that keep us connected with those that we love and that we miss. And what we wanted to do was really bring them into the limelight to highlight them as the hidden heroes that they truly are and to emphasize that they are the biggest trans uh, the biggest assets in our transport sector and um, but how many of us here today on this webinar even really know who they are and that was really what the purpose was behind this campaign richard lilwall our md here at kelly trap and uk featured in this campaign himself and there's a particular quote that really sticks out to me. He says, they're real people too. Their fathers, their mothers, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, children, they're real people and they've got their own pressures at home to deal with. And yet they're continuing to work to make sure that we have to continue with our lives. Now, the reason that these words have left such an impression with me is that notion of family and togetherness. This is something that for so many of us in the UK can absolutely relate to given the past six months. Regulations such as social distancing, self-isolation and local lockdowns have driven us all further and further away from the people that we love and we care about. And I'm sure there's so many of us out there, some on today's webinar also, that took that for granted before COVID. But try to think about that from a driver's perspective. They're already working long hours, spending so much time alone in the vehicles and already experiencing very little in real social interaction. But then we add in the pressures such as increased workload, 
home or personal worries, financial concerns or other commitments. And then we consider all of the completely normal human elements, such as feelings of being tired, drained, stressed, irritable and lonely. All of the factors that would change the moods and the mind frames of any one of us, I'm sure of it. And yet, despite all of this, all these feelings flying around, commercial drivers just simply carry on and they do it for us. So that as Richard says, we can have what we need to continue with our lives. And that's exactly what brings me here today. Whilst the transport industry relies heavily on the end user, manufacturers, etc., what it really relies on most is its drivers. For Teletrack and Asmind as sponsors of this webinar today, this is really an opportunity for us, for us to invest back into those drivers, back into those hidden heroes. Or what I should really say is reinvest into those heroes. The way we see it is that each and every driver has supported us, especially through the pandemic, and even more so. Now's the time to really give back. And this is just one way for us to do so by sponsoring today's session with Break. So with that note, I'll finish here and I'll hand you over to Rebecca for today's main session. But once more, a huge thank you not only to Break and to Global Fleet Champions, but also to all the businesses who took part in our Who is a Commercial Driver campaign. And of course, to all the drivers out there who have been keeping our country moving throughout the most challenges of times. Thank you. Hi all, it's great to be here today. Um, I'm Rebecca Posner, a behavioural psychologist, and my aim today is to bring a spotlight on driver mental health and wellbeing. I always like to start with a statistic, um, one in six. What does that mean? Well, one in six adults over the age of 16 in England have experienced symptoms of common mental health disorders in any given week. And that is likely to be an underestimation because of biases in reporting, and it only includes common mental health disorders. Mental health has been defined in many ways. The definitions you can see on the screens highlight the complexity of mental health, whereby being mentally healthy isn't just the absence of a mental health diagnosis or difficulty, but an individual's ability to realize their own potential, to learn, express and manage a range of emotions, form and maintain good relationships, and cope and manage change and uncertainty. In order to understand the need for workplaces to look after the mental health of their employees, and particularly drivers, the first thing to understand is the size of the issue. Mental health, the difficulties that those living with poor mental health can face, and the importance of taking care of one's mental health, as well as those towards which we have a duty of care, has received increased attention in recent years and is really starting to improve, but there's still a lot that needs to be done. My focus for today is going to be to discuss the importance of taking into consideration your driver's mental health and the impact that not looking after the mental health of your employees can have on their behaviour and their well-being more widely. According to the latest Labour Force survey, there were 28.2 million days lost in 2018-2019 due to ill health and non-fatal workplace injuries. Stress, depression or anxiety account for the largest number of days lost with 12.8 million self-reported days lost due to poor mental health. When averaging that out, each person takes about 21.2 days off as a result of stress, depression, or anxiety. Now, this is of course an average across the entire UK workforce. It does provide us with an indication of the sheer scale of the issue we are tackling. What is more worrying is that these figures are self-reported and therefore are likely to be an underestimation due to the many biases and stigma still attached to mental health especially male mental health. These figures also account for just three types of mental health difficulties. There are more than 10 overarching mental health categories and more than 30 different types of mental health difficulties experienced in the UK. Along with a recent HSC report, three additional reports commissioned or conducted with MIND, the mental health charity, in 2017, 2018 and 2019, aimed to investigate the impact of mental health in the work workplace and identified some pretty alarming statistics. 62% of employees reported having experienced mental health issues due to work or where work was a related factor in their career. That average out, averages out to about one in four every month. And on top of that, 30% of the workforce has been formally diagnosed with a mental health condition at some point in their life. And if we focus more into the transport and logistics sector, 30% of work-related illnesses were due to stress, anxiety, and depression. 
but only 13% of employees felt able to turn to their line managers for support. And the cost of this is that absenteeism due to mental health costs UK businesses by 8 billion per year, presenteeism costs between 17 and 26 billion per year, and staff turnover due to mental health difficulties costs about 2.4 billion each year. But in order to understand how to start addressing poor mental health in the workplace, we need to understand what is leading to people developing poor mental health. So let's talk about stress. Almost everyone these days has experienced stress in some capacity, whether that be at work or in their personal lives. There is no exact definition of stress, which can make it very difficult to identify. But in the broadest sense, stress is the feeling of being under abnormal pressure. And figures from a recent study carried out by the Mental Health Foundation as part of Mental Health Awareness Week found that of 4,620 people surveyed, 74% reported that in the past year they had felt so stressed that they had been overwhelmed or unable to cope. Now I'm sure that many of us have been this person in the car. Stress, and particularly work-related stress, is now recognised by the HSE, which means that employers have now have a legal duty to protect their employees from stress at work. The HSE defines stress as the adverse reaction people have to excessive pressures or other types of demands that are placed on them. Stress affects everyone differently. What stresses one person may not affect another. The HSE highlighted six areas of work design that can affect stress levels. These are demand, control, support, relationships, role and change. Now, I'm sure you'll agree with me that a number of these factors are highly relevant to the fleet industry. So what is it that leads to poor mental health at work? Well, based on the academic literature, it is evident that the working environment within the transport industry has a strong impact on the mental health and well-being of professional drivers. As the academically published research shows, the growing body of work that is being done in the UK and engagement with the industry in the UK confirms, drivers describe their working environment as highly competitive with increasing company scrutiny for increased use of telematics and technology long working hours with increased pressure of more demands in just-in-time deliveries, and irregular shift work, high demands for continuous mental alertness in what can be at times a monotonous job, and poor work-life balance, which can lead to chronic social isolation. HSE's recent report further supports this, listing seven key factors that impact mental health with the most, with the most reported being workload which includes tight deadlines, too much work, pressure or responsibility. This is reporting about three times more than any other factor. The sum of the other factors include lack of support for management, violence, threats and bullying, changes at work, including changes in management, organisation, introduction of new technologies or processes, role uncertainty, which includes lack of clarity about the job or uncertainty of the specifics of a role, and lack of control, which is having no say over what or how to do their job. So what does this all mean for mental health? Well, effectively, it leads to higher levels of poor mental health, including higher levels of depression, stress and anxiety. As well as this, it also leads to increased prevalence rates of sleep problems and chronic fatigue, higher levels of social dysfunction and loneliness, but more worryingly in the transport industry, particularly freight drivers, fewer are seeking professional support to manage their mental health. Whilst many have become aware in recent years of the impact of poor mental health on overall health, what isn't as known is the impact that poor mental health can have on driver behaviour. Now, if we go back to stress, as we mentioned, those who drive for work are more likely to experience stress, in part due to their working environment, and they're less likely to seek support. I'm sure that for most of you listening today, your top priority is safety, ensuring that your drivers get from A to B safely and securely. Well, stress can affect road safety as a result of the impact that it has on driver behaviour. Firstly, stress is dynamic, which means that stress from different sources interact with each other. So stress can be transferred from one environment to the other. What that means is that increased work-related stress as a result of increased demand on drivers, for example, can be combined with stress occurring in someone's personal life. So if someone's experiencing stress at home, that stress doesn't disappear when they arrive at work or get into their vehicle, but instead that gets transferred to the driving environment and the driving task. And as we all know, the driving task and the driving environment is not stress-free. 
So what that means in terms of road safety is increased self-reported crash involvement, increased cognitive lapses, increased driving errors, and increased traffic violations. And that is just the impact of stress. There is a growing body of evidence linking poor mental health more widely, such as the condition shown on the screen, to risky and dangerous driving behaviour that can lead to increased likelihood of commi committing lapses in driving, increased traffic violations and driving errors, and ultimately increased self-reported crash involvement. And let's talk about the elephant in the room, COVID-19. Many, if not all drivers were essential workers during lockdown and were put under increased amount of pressure to keep the nation going. And for many, their work environments have become harder with more pressure, longer hours, more time away from their families, more lone working, putting themselves at higher risk, as well as all the other stresses of lockdown. On top of that, the freight and, freight and fleet industry has grown substantially over the last few months, with many people joining organisations after having been made redundant and having had to adapt to new processes and procedures remotely, adding pressure. Or alternatively, for many, they have been furloughed or lost their jobs altogether, what's more, adding substantial stress and triggering poor mental health. While the, the data around the impact of lockdown on mental health is still growing, the evidence is suggesting that the impact has been substantial, including the impact on key workers, and we are moving towards a mental health crisis. So it is more important than ever that we become aware of mental health and put in place processes to be more proactive in managing mental health and supporting employees. All employers have a duty of care towards their employees and not looking after them can have a number of significant impacts on both your staff and your organisation itself. Poor mental health can translate to higher absenteeism, higher presenteeism, higher staff turnaround, poor staff morale, but more importantly, increases the likelihood of the drivers being involved in a collision, both minor or severe, and therefore putting the lives of the drivers at risk. So what do we do next? Well, there are five steps that you can start immediately. Firstly, review your operational practices. Identify what might be having negative impacts on your employees' mental health and address them. Figures suggest that 62% of managers have had to put the interests of their organisation above their staff wellbeing, either regularly or every day. Secondly, do your bit to break down the barriers surrounding mental health, particularly male mental health. Nothing is too small. Figures suggest that only 11% of managers in the UK have received training on understanding workplace stresses and only 7% of all employees. Talk to your drivers and employees and listen to your drivers and employees. Now I separate talk and listen because it's all well and good talking to your employees, but actually listening to what they are saying without judgment and without misinterpretation is even more important. Figures suggest that, those, that of those who disclosed the mental health problem, 33% felt ignored. And finally, act on what you hear. And remember that one size doesn't fit all, and it is important to provide tailored support where possible. Now, I'll provide you with a couple of resources that can get you started in this process that I think are really well designed. The first resource I will mention is a website called Mental Health at Work. Now, this is the website that was created about 18 months ago that collates resources to support employers. It includes a number of free resources that can be filtered by industry, with some having been developed by logistics, transport and construction companies, so are directly relevant to your field, many of which organisations have previously been involved in some of the break webinars. The resources on there have the resources on there that include ones that have been specifically developed to deal with the pandemic and the symptoms that have arisen of it. Tools for raising awareness and tackling stigma associated with mental health, including male mental health. Tools for starting conversations about mental health and routes through which key workers can receive free support. Other resources include HSC website that has a whole section dedicated to resources around work related stress. Mind the mental health charity that provides a number of resources, including routes in which, ways through which you can train mental health first aiders and bring them into a company. And of course, the NHS website. So finally, I'll finish off today by saying a big thank you to you for joining and once again to break for organising today's events and I'll take any questions.
Good afternoon, everyone. That concludes the presentation section of today's webinar. A big thank you again to our speakers, Rebecca and Heather. I'm pleased to say they've both joined us now for the question and answer session. Uh, but before we move on to that, we'll discuss the results of today's poll. Don't forget, you can submit any questions you may have using the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. So in today's poll, we asked you if you'd seen an increase in driver mental health cases as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. 29% of you have said, yes, you have. 43% said no. And 29% said they don't know. Rebecca, are these results um, surprising to you? Are they roughly in line with what you've been seeing in other things across the fleet industry? Sorry, Re uh, excuse me. Rebecca, I believe you're on mute. If you could just unmute yourself. Yeah, that's it, done it. That's the classic. Um, uh, classic error that if it doesn't happen in a meeting has it has it really been a virtual meeting um thank you um that does surprise me a little bit but also i'm uh, the i don't know doesn't surprise me and i'm quite i'm quite glad that actually people have been that honest by 30 percent of, of those attending have said i don't know um there has been uh, over the last couple of weeks a lot more data that's come out around the increase in driver mental health cases well in mental health cases um especially across the uk in comparison towards last year and the the evidence that's coming out is sort of um pretty conclusive that the impact has been quite substantial i think there was some evidence that came out that saying that depression cases had doubled um, from April 2020 compared to April 2019. And there was actually a really interesting study that looked at and compared the mental health rates of key key workers, and that included transport workers, which demonstrated that they had got higher prevalence rates of, of depression, anxiety and, and PTSD. Um, I think what potentially doesn't surprise me, however, is that um, with everything moving remotely, it might be that we're not able to spot certain changes that that would we might have been more easily able to spot if we were in, in the workplaces or, or meeting uh, or seeing drivers more regularly face to face. Um, so the I'm quite glad to see that that percentage of don't know. Um, a little bit worried by the nose and would potentially encourage uh, those who said no to maybe reach out to drivers that they've they've not heard from in a while. Or, or start prompting discussions to make sure and, and check that drivers are, are doing okay. Um, I expected the yeses to be slightly higher, but um, maybe that's a good thing. Hmm. Now we do have a relatively small sample size here today, so they may not be particularly yeah. representative. <laughs> but, um, Heather, then regarding Teletrack Navman, have you? Is this something you've seen in your own organisation uh, in terms of mental health cases along the workforce uh, due to COVID? or even just uh, more generally? Hi, yeah, um, I think it's a really interesting question. I think in terms of the business itself, yes, we have definitely, uh, since everybody has been working remotely from home, we've definitely had an, um, an emphasis inside our business to make sure that all of our staff are coping well. Um, we, we all frequently have meetings within our teams. We have monthly meetings. We have so many opportunities where we can virtually get back together and, and get that sense of community that we've all lost. Um, so absolutely yes, in terms of business. In terms of a wider sense more generally, I think I completely agree with Rebecca. This is a really interesting question. I'm also really pleased with the responses of I don't know. Um, I think what's really interesting is that since again siding with Rebecca that we are also remotely um, isolated, if you will, since COVID. I think it's interesting that some people may physically either not have the chance to show people, but I think people get quite good at hiding it as well physically. You know, there's still a little bit of a stigma out there around around mental health. So how, how often they're not, if somebody says, if somebody noticed that you may not be yourself and they ask what's wrong, how many of us can hold our hands up and say, oh, oh yeah, I'm fine, or I'm just tired when, really you just don't want to talk about it so hiding that side of yourself is, is quite a common thing and yes definitely one that i've seen more of generally and um, since covid as well so yeah definitely a two-part question then um which i suppose both of you be well placed to answer um 
do you have any suggestions for ways that we can encourage people to uh, feel more comfortable coming forward about mental health issues they may be um, experiencing, you know, anything that fleets can be doing to try and break down the barriers or the stigma that's often associated with this? Um, and the second part of that would be, obviously the working landscape has changed for a lot of people right now with many more people working from home. How can we adapt these initiatives to, you know, deal with this new working environment? Yeah, it, that's a really good question. And I think um, the topic of mental health was already a tricky one to, to approach and to discuss uh, when we were able to see people face to face. Um, and obviously, um, the move to virtual has, I think the point that Heather made about it's much easier to hide it when you're, you're only talking to people on the phone or, or uh, for a Zoom meeting where you can turn your camera off or even only have to have it on for half an hour. Um, so it's kind of made everything a little bit harder, especially as those who would normally look after and of the well-being and mental health of, of drivers are also uh, really heavily affected Um could also be really heavily affected by um, um, the pandemic. So I guess the first thing for me is around um, having conversations. That's that's the main thing that we can do. The more we talk about it, the more we normalise the topic. Um, but the main thing to do is to do it without judgment, uh, which can be really tricky. Um, and it's not about necessarily um, forcing people or making people um, discuss or share how they're feeling, but um, making them feel like it's OK to do so if they feel so inclined. Um, there's a few tips that I've, I've just been through my mental health first aid of refresher training and a couple of things in there that were suggested around how to spot if someone's acting a bit differently. So things in there were sort of if you are spending a lot of time, for example, on uh, virtual or meetings if someone always had their camera on but is now no longer doing so maybe dropping them a message to see if everything's okay or if you notice that all of a sudden uh, they're not as engaging as often or it's taking longer for responses to come back just a quick friendly message to sort of check in and make sure that they're okay um, and I might leave well I don't want to leave the second part of the question to Heather but I also don't want to take up all the time so I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add to that Heather <laughs> no problem. Uh, the only other, the only other thing that I would add to that is I completely agree. Um, one of the things that I have particularly seen, again, not just in Teletrack and Adman, but more generally also in the transport sector, um, is really, especially since COVID, obviously we've lost that sense of being together in an office and you know having, if if somebody does you a favour and you're appreciative, then like being able to not shout, but you know thank them physically and, and verbally I think what I've definitely seen more of and I love seeing is people making a big deal out of mini wins I would say um, and it, it could be something absolutely tiny it could be like so somebody picked up a delivery five minutes earlier and that helped you in, in your next um, your next drop-off point or something like that or it could be something even tiny like oh uh, somebody answered the door for me or picked up a, a bit of post for me or something. I think shouting about the little tiny wins that made a difference to your day is, is really, really helpful. I think obviously times have been really, really difficult for all of us around the whole around the whole world, basically. So it's easy to get stuck on the negatives and, and stuck on the um the disheartening moments and it's easy to lose sight of what's what's made you happy during that day those really happy little moments so my top tip would be definitely be to highlight those to yourselves and, and to the people who have made them happen as well and, and make a big deal about those really big little wins. I completely agree with you Heather I think that's such a great suggestion uh, and definitely something that um, it's about focusing on on the future and not and thinking about those positives so those little wins and also thinking about trying to reassess or re um reshape your thinking about what a successful day looks like or what a successful meeting looks like or what a successful drive looks like and really reshaping and reframing those so that those little things that may have gone unnoticed before i think as heather said um in her introduction well in her introductory and um point at the, um at the start of the session about reshaping and reframing what we might have taken for granted but now are actually a really really big deal and that we shouldn't maybe have taken for granted beforehand so uh, the process of, of reshaping and and allowing ourselves to be happy with things that we might have seen as just day to day beforehand uh, that's a really a really great step forward 
That's great. Thank you very much. That's all the time we've got uh, today uh, for today's spotlight session. So I just wanted to say one more big thank you to our speakers, Rebecca and Heather, and of course to our sponsors for today's uh, webinar, Teletrack Navman. We do hope you found today's webinar useful and there's been some lessons you can take home from it today to implement in your own organizations in terms of how you look after driver mental health and well-being. If you'd like to continue any of the conversations we've had today, you can do so on our Global Fleet Champions LinkedIn page or on our Twitter. You can also view any of our upcoming webinars on our globalfleetchampions.org. Thank you again for the webinar. We'll now conclude. <laughs>